Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how to keep your tomato plants blight free all season long. Now, this is something that a lot of gardeners aim for. Very few gardeners can get it because there's, uh, it, it's an aggressive, uh, an aggressive care regimen on your tomatoes to keep them blight free. But I can tell you that if you are up for it, the rewards are so huge. I mean, the, the, the amount of tomatoes that you're going to get throughout a full growing season versus just like half a growing season when most tomatoes start getting blight and, and stressed and dying um, is just incredible. I mean, you can like double or triple your yields and, uh, and just, by, just by taking these care tips. So I do hope you'll enjoy this episode um, and we're gonna jump right on into it. So it's not gonna hopefully be a long one, um, but the first part that you wanna do is you wanna single stem. Tomatoes are very prone to blight. They just, uh, they naturally just get it. I, I don't know a single person, uh, regardless of their skill level, that has not gotten blight. Um, but it's it's the the time in the season that you get the blight. Um, I know for me, before I was using all these tips and I was just growing them just to grow them and I didn't really care about uh, any care tips at all. I just was growing the tomatoes. I would get blight right around maybe now early August. So this is like late July, early August. I'd start to get blight. And that is, I mean, that's a shame because our plants, if taken care, uh, if you take care of them well here in Michigan, they can go up until mid-October. So uh, early August versus mid-October. Um, they're just so prone to blight. And, uh, and one of the things you can do is that you can, um, you can defoliate. And defoliation seems like a bad thing but we talk about all the time how defoliation is a good thing. We talked about with our with our zucchini as well. Defoliation is a good thing. A lot of gardeners freak out about it, but it is something that is very important if you're going to have blight-free tomatoes because foliage really kind of clutters things up. And if you have a lot of foliage and you're not single stemming your tomatoes, single stemming is even a way to cut out even more foliage uh, because you're not having extra side growth, extra you know new plants, the suckers growing. You're going to take off all that extra foliage, um, leaving only what the plant needs, and it's going to allow for very good airflow. Airflow is super important because when water from dew or rain gets on the leaves, that dew or rain needs to dry out because there's fungus in the air. And that'll lead to our, our next part about fungus, which is the uh, blight is a fungus. Um, and it's also found in the soil. So there's soil borne fungus, there's air borne fungus, and, uh, and those mold spores are what causes the blight. And if you can't dry your leaves out, that's gonna be the first reason why you get the blight is because those, those blight spores need moisture in order to cultivate. And so you can uh, greatly cut down on the amount of blight you have by having uh, drier conditions on the leaves. Um, and that's the first step. So single stemming and defoliating. On, that, uh, on the defoliating method, uh, or on the defoliating topic, I'm gonna bring you in close to kind of Part, uh, or tip 1.2 or 1.5. Uh, it's, uh, it's not necessarily part two, but it's going to be uh, the, the, next part, the next part in defoliating. So coming in close, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can see here with our tomatoes, all the soil has airflow around it and the leaves are taken way, way up. You'll see some curling here and stuff. That's not actually an issue. That's just caused from uh, heat stress when our when our temperatures were in the hundreds for a straight week and they had very little uh, water. So that's that's fine. That's not a problem. But you can see here, if you look, there are, is a good eight to ten inches from soil level to the lowest leaf branch, and that's what we that's what we like to see. We'll take our branches and we will prune them up. You can see all these little all these little scabs here, the scab there, scab there, scab there, scab there, scab there. We take all those leaves off because what we want to do is want to keep the leaves way off soil level. And the industry standard is typically um, the you want to go two two leaf nodes above the fruit. So you get the first fruit set and you go one leaf node, two leaf nodes, and you prune that and that or and you you leave this one and this is about as, uh, as low as you wanna go with your fruit or your, your leaf. So that will keep the leaves well off of the soil so that any splashing that occurs won't get any, uh, any fungus spores from the soil on the leaves and also will allow good airflow underneath, which is super important as well. So as you can see, absolutely no blight. Even though they're curled, 
no blight. The, the leaves are green, they are rigid, they're very healthy, and that is what we like to see. So the next step in keeping your tomato plants blight free all season long is to spray regularly with a baking soda spray. Baking soda is going to change the pH of your leaf. And the leaf surface needs to be a certain pH in order for the, the blight spores to be able to colonize. So if you change the, the pH, the, the blight spores can't colonize. So what we do is we take two tablespoons of baking soda into one gallon of water. We'll take uh, one tablespoon of vegetable oil and then just a few drops of dish soap just to emulsify that oil in the water. We'll shake it up really well and then we'll spray down our plants once every two weeks. Now once every two weeks. And the reason why is because any more than that you can stress your plant out. Even if it's an organic chemical, it still can stress your plants out and your plants don't like being sprayed with chemicals regardless if they're inorganic or not. So um, what you want to do is you want to just spray them down just as a preventative to keep that pH of your leaf inhospitable, but not too much that it stresses the plant out. Um, and if you have blight, if you actually do have blight already, um, you can still spray it down, but use it once a week. We have videos on that, you can check it out. Now the third and final step to keeping your tomato plants blight free is actually by keeping them in the sun. So tomato plants, they will get blight if they do not get sun. Weak leaves and stressed leaves are generally leaves that don't have access to enough sunlight. And so the sun, uh, actually much like um, if you have acne and you go out in the sun, sun exposure will help to clear up that acne. Um, but not saying that acne and, and blight are you know, the same. What I'm saying is the solar radiation from the sun will help to radiate the leaves just enough to take care of the blight spores. And oftentimes where you see blight is on leaves that are tucked in in shade. So what we will do is we will go around and how we space out our plants and how we, uh, how we prune our plants also will dictate um, you know, kind of the, the, the health of the plant. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to have any leaves that are in deep dark shade. So I'll show you what I'm talking about now. So going all up along the stake here, you'll notice that the leaves go out in one direction and out in the other. And what we'll do is we will actively prune the, the plant if there are any leaves going into the center. Because you'll see here in the center of the bed, there are not any or very few leaves that are going into the center. And I see a few that, that could be pruned here. Um, you'll see down here, down here there's, there's this branch here. And so we'll take that and we'll, you know, we'll prune that one off when I get a chance um, because I don't have snippers on me right now. But this leaf here is growing into the center and you'll have an issue because this row of tomatoes here will shade this row of tomatoes and the center here does not get a whole lot of sun. And that sun is what's really important to keeping, keeping your leaves blight free. So as you can see over here, we have the same thing. Most of our foliage, most of our foliage goes parallel to the bed um, or, or comes out, either out or parallel, and that way it has access to the sun over here, just like this side of the bed has foliage coming this way or parallel to have access to this part of the sun. And anything in here is a no-go because we want that very, very good sun exposure, which will help to keep the plants blight free. So there are three simple steps you can follow to keeping your tomato plants blight free. Now I know that uh, obviously the season is already underway. There are things you can do to mitigate the problems. Um, like you can still go back and prune. Even if your plants are fully mature, you can still prune up your tomato plants. You can get that foliage off the soil. There are still things you can do. It's not too late. Um, but it is still information that you can take into next year as well, even if it is too late. And so uh, I just, I also wanna close and stress that even though tomato plants are very prone to blight, it is very easy to control. And I think oftentimes people find it daunting. I think people find it really overwhelming to, to prune their plants. I don't know what to prune. I don't know wh uh, what not to prune. What I can tell you is that we have videos on that. And I think one of the biggest things is just doing it. If you don't do it, not doing it is going to have a guaranteed uh, chance of, of failure because the fact of the matter is, is that not taking, your, not taking care of your tomato plants is just like rolling the dice as to when your tomato plants are going to get blight. You might have a really good season and it might be very dry and it might be you know, very sunny, it might be very warm, 
and your tomato plants don't get blight until you know later in the season. Um, or it could be like how it is here, and our neighbors, their tomato plants are already plagued with blight, whereas ours are beautiful, they're strong, they're growing because we've taken those steps. And so it's not to say that uh, your growing conditions can't help you out a little bit, but simply by doing nothing at all, is you're just gambling and I would never wanna gamble with my tomato plants. So um, take those steps and it's really, really easy. It looks daunting to someone that's never pruned a tomato plant, but I can tell you, we do have videos on it. I will post links to how we prune our tomato plants in the description box below. And even if you're not using our staking methods, you can still prune them up uh, like I showed you by taking the, the leaves from the bottom up to the first fruit set. You can still uh, help your plants out by taking off unneeded suckers and things like that. That is still something that any, anybody using, uh, using any method can do. So as always, I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch y'all later. See ya. Bye.